Today on the table I have a Browning Mark II Safari. The serial number dates back to the early 90s, sometime around 1997. The rifle. Has an overall length of th 43 and a quarter inches and a length of pull of about 13 and three quarters of an inch. Now on the internet, I'm seeing a lot of people quoting this around eight pounds. I have no idea where they got their weight from. Maybe with the magazine removed and without a scope or a scope mount on it. But this particular rifle is just short of 10 pounds. It's close enough to 10 pounds. If I were to throw ammunition in this, it would be 10 pounds. This particular rifle has the engraving on the receiver and it has the gold trigger. I'm told that the gold trigger means it was made in Belgium, but I can't confirm that. Something you'll have to look up yourself. It's also got the balls, the boss break. It's when we first started understanding barrel harmonics. Um, in the, like the 1903s and stuff, there was a screw in the stock you could tighten that would push on the barrel. The idea was to adjust your harmonics because your bullet's gonna go off, or your cartridge is gonna go off, your bullet's gonna travel down the barrel. And there's also gonna be a vibration wave, kind of like a guitar string. And as your bullet goes down the barrel, you don't want it to exit at the same time that the vibration's there, because then you'll never have consistent groups. They're gonna be all over the place. The idea behind this is to extend the vibration out to here, so then you have the space keeping your bullet, you know, from touching the barrel. So hopefully, the vibration wave will still be going up the barrel as the bullet goes through so then it's not right at the crown of the right of the, right at the crown of the muzzle or passing through the muzzle as your bullet exits making the accuracy terrible and you can adjust this longer or shorter to be able to adjust that wave this is also a muzzle break which is pretty good i personally shot this rifle and the recoil isn't that bad that break does a pretty good job Unfortunately, the brake, it shoots the gases in all directions, so it's not going to really help with muzzle climb. It's just going to help with felt recoil. Basically, you get recoil from a couple of different components. One, the mechanical recoil from the bolt coming to the rear. Another one from when the bullet exits, the gas is following it, provides thrust, kind of like a rocket ship. And what you're going to do is redirect those gases, so instead of pushing straight back on you, they're pushing against themselves. But yeah, on felt recoil, it actually does a pretty good job. Uh, you do get a hammer forged barrel. This is made by FN. It is also chrome lined. Very high quality. This rifle was made to fit a niche. Basically, you got your World War II soldiers that are getting into hunting now, so they want a semi automatic, they want wood, they want low capacity. And that's what this covers. You're looking at four rounds in the magazine. And then one in the chamber, five total, and it's kind of got like an M1 grand feel about it. Like just how you load it and everything, which is very complicated to do. You can carry spare magazines, because these lock off. So like, let's say you run out of ammo, you can put in your new magazine, lock it and close it. But I'd rather just have a completely detachable magazine, my personal thoughts. Now this rifle has a unique advantage. You can chamber 300 Win Mag. Well, not this particular one. This is in 30 out 6 But you can get these in 300 Win Mag, which is pretty cool because very, very few semi-automatic rifles offer that. And honestly, if I was going to purchase this rifle, it would have to be in 300 Win Mag, so it's special. There's no external sights, but you do have your scope mount, so you can put a scope on this. The overall length, of, or the length of pull, for me, anyway, it's too long. I like 13 and a quarter. I don't know, though, if that length of pull would work unless... Well, I mean, you could move the scope forward enough, but taking off that length of pull, I think that I'd wind up getting scope bite because my head would be too close. Because even right here, my head's too close. I have to bring the scope forward. Now, the distance between the scope and the stock is pretty good, comparably speaking to most rifles. Like, I can find my scope picture... I prefer to have my head down here so it's very consistent and I get a very solid cheek weld, but then the scope's too high. That is something you got to kind of deal with though, but on a 300 Win Mag, I don't necessarily think I would want my cheek really buried down in there. The stock is cut correctly, 
So as it recoils, the stock is going to be moving away from your face. But still, with a 300 Win Mag, I mean, that kind of changes a lot of things, because that's a big cartridge. Now, this does use a rotating bolt, just like your AR-15. It's a three-lug design. I mean, it works, and this doesn't seem to have problems, so that's good. Trigger brake. I don't have a trigger scale. But it feels something like six and a half pounds. It's pretty creepy too. Here's your wall, creep, and then your snap. So it's not the cleanest trigger brake, but it really isn't that bad. Would I purchase this rifle? This particular rifle, probably not because I'm not a 30 odd six fan. Now, if this was in 300 Win Mag, I would definitely consider it because you can't really get, well, you can get a semi-automatic 300 Win Mag, but there's only like one or two companies that make it, and I think it's like $3,000. So this would be half the cost in 300 Win Mag. Now, as in like 308, it's competitively priced. Yeah, you can go get like a PSA AR-10 variant, but you're really lacking in the barrel, and the barrel is where most of the cost goes anyway. This has a cold hammer forge barrel that's chrome lined. If you were to go get an AR-10 with a cold hammer forge barrel that's chrome lined, it's gonna be the exact same price or more expensive, most likely about $1,500. Where you can pick these up on Gun Broker for around 1,000. But with the disadvantages of the weight, the kind of sort of detachable magazine, if I wanted a semi-auto in like 308, I would not choose this rifle, I would go with an AR-10 but I'd still be spending about the same amount just because I want a quality barrel. I shot this particular rifle, I was getting about two MOA. Now I just ran one kind of ammunition and I didn't screw around with the boss break because I don't have the tool. If I were to screw around with the boss break and played with a couple of different types of ammunition, I'm willing to bet you could probably get this to like one MOA. I doubt it'll go sub MOA, but you never know. The reason I don't think it'll go sub on the way is because the handguard is attached and this is an external piston system and they're just inaccurate. That's nature of the beast. Now, if this was in 300 Win Mag and I wanted a 300 Win Mag and I wanted semi-auto, without a doubt, yes, I would purchase this rifle because the competitive options just aren't there. Even though it's a little bit heavier, it still looks cool. So it's kind of worth it to me. Plus it's a Browning, which has got an awesome name. But anyway, leave in the comments below if you own one of these rifles or if you would purchase this rifle, why or why not? Don't forget to subscribe.